What's up everyone, Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net and what I have behind me here is one, not a Lincoln Town Car and two, probably I could guarantee is going to be the cheapest car I ever sell um, ever because I hate selling cheap cars this car I have on a rare occasion took it in on trade, I'm going to tell you all about this Buick behind me uh, and um, see if I can rehome this cheap ride to one of you folks uh let's get into the video we're gonna do a full walk around we'll take it for a test drive and tell you all about it right here in this video let's get going and here she is a somewhat beautiful 2011 Buick Lucerne CXL. Uh, this would be the last year of this full-size Buick. This Buick, I think they came out with the Lucerne in 2006. This was kind of to replace the discontinuation of like the Park Aves and the LeSabres. They went to the Lucerne, they went to the LaCrosse, and I mean, these, these are basically a Cadillac DTS in Buick clothing. Um, so much so that this Lucerne shares the same platform as the DTS. Uh, this is just a V6 front wheel drive version, um, which love it or hate it. You know, it doesn't have the power and torque as the North Star, but it's not a North Star. And there's people who love or hate North Stars. Most people who hate North Stars hate it for the wrong reason, or they never really dealt with a North Star that's just going by myth and what they have in their mind anyways let's go into that but um this is a cxl so i think this is upper trim i know it's not a base it's got leather heated seats i say this is a cheap car because this car i took it on trade um i know i've said it a few times but maybe you guys don't understand i don't do a lot of local business so most of my cars come in on a truck and they leave on a truck i don't actually meet the people who buy them because i sell online and I ship my cars everywhere. Uh, I have had a string lately of local car sales. Uh, this car going to a, well, coming from a local town car customer who uh, recently purchased that silver 2010 I had with the black leather interior. Uh, I think that car had like 35,000 miles. Anyways, he traded in this 2011 Buick Lucerne um, that I believe if I remember right, he inherited from his father-in-law, um, but he's a town car guy. He had a town car, won another town car. This was a perfect opportunity for him to get it in. So he bought that from me and I was able to take this car in on trade. Normally, if you're far away and you've got a car that you wanna trade in, I mean, unless the car has real value, it's hard for me to take it in on trade because I have to factor in the cost of shipping your trade in to me into the trade figure. This, it was local. The thing with this car is, it's got 144,000 miles, not typically the mileage I deal with, and it's got some bumps and bruises, but it was an easy service to get rid of it for my customer by trading it, and it was a local car, and sometimes I, I love the underdogs, and this was an underdog, so this car needed a little bit of work when it was, um, uh, I don't know, deemed trade-worthy, or, or what prompted the trade. Um, this car is um it went through some service with me but you can see here it's got a few bumps and bruises um and i want to point all that out kind of now um instead of you know going through the whole whole thing i'm gonna you know tell you it needs a little bit of work here and there a little bit of tlc uh, a few little spots but uh so this car needed brake hoses it had a ruptured brake hose in the front um it needed brakes it needed a battery um i did a lot to this car but i didn't do everything to this car and, and you know <laughs> i have a hard time with cheap cars because one i don't like selling them you ask me why everybody you think oh everybody loves buying cheap cars it must be easy to sell that's a myth i hate selling cheap cars because not for nothing but the people who buy cheap cars usually expect the most have the highest expectations um and it's hard to hold high expectations on a cheap car because there's only so much you can do to it so i took this car went on trade it needed a brake hose 
to even, I mean, drive because it was undrivable. There was no brakes. So I had the car towed up to my shop. I then subletted the repairs out to a local shop. I know they did one. They might have done two front brake hoses in the car. The rubber hose had ruptured. Um, I then had to do front pads and rotors. They were pulsating. I then also had them do all four motor mounts in this car because the engine was ready to leap out of the engine cradle. So there's three motor mounts and a transmission mount. Had those done. Um, I had to put a new battery in. It's one of those under the seat batteries. Had a new AC Delco battery put in. Replaced two taillights. The two outer taillights are both cracked. Um, replaced the rear air shocks. You couldn't even drive it up and down the street. It was bouncing like crazy. So that's what I did do. It still needs a little bit of TLC. It's got a matched set of Michelins on it. The rears are starting to get a little skinny. Two good tires, two mediocre tires. Actually, one okay tire. One is starting to get real skinny. I think it might be this side. You can see there. Um, needs an alignment. It's got some cosmetic issues. Um, I believe it needs valve cover gaskets. It leaks a little bit of oil. Um, you know, but it starts, runs, there's no check engine lights, there's no warning lights. It's actually got cold air conditioning. You know, so I, I did a little bit, but I couldn't do all of it because for the price point of this car, I'd be taking it on trade, fixing it, and selling it and breaking even or losing money, and I can't do that. So this is a budget-friendly car. With that in mind, I'm going to show you now some of the defects. You can see here, front bumper. This car was old, owned by an older gentleman uh, before my customers took it in. And you can see it is, there's been some previous body work on the front bumper and it's cracking. It's been bumped and bruised a few times, you can see here, and then kind of touched up. Front bumper is a little ugly. Uh, it looks like you can kind of see like a little shadowing here of a spot that was touched up. You know, some paint chipping on the fenders. But yeah, it's a beautiful pearl white. I think this is white diamond, you know, the same color that they would put on the Cadillacs. You can see some chipping throughout here. A little bit of misalignment with some of the front fenders, you can see there. You know, so I know it's been bumped into and body worked. A little chip there. A little small spot of rust just starting behind this mud flap. A little scuff there. Front windshield, roof is in good shape. Uh, this door, you know, a couple little minor scuffs. I didn't go too, too crazy on detailing this car, you know, but it's got a few little chips here and there. Some of this stuff will come out. Some of it just needs a brush touch. You can see a few little chips on the dog, uh, upper dog leg there. Scuff, little guy right there. Um, like I said, the front tires are decent, Michelins. You can see they got pretty decent tread there, new pads, rotors in the front. Um, this wheel, it's got a pretty good scar on it. This tire is getting thin. I showed you that. Uh, you can see the little scuffs here. Just the corner of the taillight was broken, so I replaced the taillight. Some scuffs here. This actually would rub out with a little bit of compound or even lacquer thinner. You know, but again, you can see just random spots of paint chipping where the bumper cover has been repainted and chipping off again. Deck lid, pretty decent shape. A few little chips here on the top edge. Rear glass is good. Again, a few little chips. And I could have spent a little bit of time scratch there on the deck lid and done some touch-ups, but I don't know. Where you think going with it? Kind of hard to see, but there is a little bit of a dent, kind of like right here in the quarter, the way it's kind of dented it. I know I got some shadow casting from the trees. A couple little spots there. Decent little thing right there on the C pillar. This wheel's in pretty decent shape, and this tire is the skinniest as far as tread. You can see in there, it's getting a little skinny. Little scuff right there on the roof. These doors are in pretty decent shape. Uh, this mirror 
it works it stays in the right spot um but it's it's loose that it like doesn't it, it catches its spot but like it just kind of flips around but if you get it right you can kind of get it right in that spot and it stays it doesn't like flop in i've driven this car but you know one easy bush a whoosh and <laughs> the thing kind of flops around a little bit um you know all stuff you could chase it like a uh, pick apart or something like that um the other thing i noticed is somewhere in here where are you oh yeah this guy is kind of broken this little windshield squirter kind of barely hangs on there but i'm sure if you use it, it would probably squirt off well maybe it stays on there i don't know this alloy wheel is in good shape this is a 17 inch 235 55 17 decent tread on the front here again i think i started over here but you can see it's just you know some scuffs chips nicks you know misalignment a little bit of the front bumper it's a cheap car cheap 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 car um that's uh that's the outside inside is nice shape we're gonna get into the inside all right let's open it up show you the inside of this cadillac dts buick <laughs> Um, so, like I said, this is the CXL version, so it does have leather, dual power seats, uh, heated seats, memory seats, you know, all your window controls there. A couple little marks here and there, little chips on the door card, even in the door jam some, but not rusty inside here. All inside the jam is in nice shape. Gaskets, weather stripping, shows well, some chipping on the inside of that door edge uh, but nothing horrible the inside of this car is actually in pretty nice shape i would say considering the miles uh, there's a little piece of purple tape here i'm assuming uh, there's no missing piece but i'm assuming to cover a crack or something i don't know it's not broken there's plastic there usually these things crack somewhere up here because the just the design of these from sliding in and out but a little bit of wear on the driver's seat, you know, typical of the miles, but not torn up. Heated seat does work. Uh, carpeting is in decent shape. Uh, it does even have a heated steering wheel. This is a five passenger. You could get these just like the DTSs where they were bench in the front or buckets in the, the console. Open up the back doors here. Nothing crazy going on here. You know, it's really just a whole hum car. I don't know how that got dinged. A little scratch there. There's that little ding that you can see a little better there. I showed you. Um, no heated rear seats like the DTSs have, but can't have everything in this world. Uh, side airbags. I think it's got side curtain airbags as well. Back seat's in pretty decent shape. Carpeting clean. A little staining down there in the corner. Too, too crazy rear shelf. Probably got a big center console or a tray there. Seat back pockets, a little stretched. And inside those jams, clean. And then just these little chips here, probably from putting something in, so in and out of the car. You can see some like wrinkling or weird there's no holes or anything but maybe something was set on the seat for a while thinking not a lot of rear seat passengers but maybe garage sale finds we'll say door panels in good shape That's uh, whoever put that <laughs> bolt is supposed to be for this bracket. Whoever must have had this fender off at some point. Um, yeah, you missed one. They actually folded it over in there. Uh, but passenger door panel, little scar right there. Again, heated seats. Buick. 
you have dual power front and back and then this is four-way lumbar passenger seat shows well again a little bit of wear here and there typical for the car for the age dashboard carpeting this shows pretty good we'll get all over there in just a second all right all right behind the wheel of the buick one thing i meant to point out when i did the inside um when i did the windshield clean the windshield this mirror came i mean off uh not only did it come off i tried gluing it i don't know if it's stuck yet but you can actually see where it took a little bit of a chunk of the glass out which is kind of weird so i glued the tab up but oh no i'm a, you can see a little chunk of glass there it's not cracked or anything it just i don't know if that's sticking or not so i just tucked the plug up there but yeah i have the mirror right there Nice job, Anthony. Um, I do have two keys, one remote with remote starter. Uh, let's start it up here. Original book. Put that back in the glove box along with our mirror. Trunk open, yes. Hood open, I know. 144,465 miles. Uh, let's pop the hood. Oh, we already did that show you what's in there let's probably see that dent a little better the trunk um do have all four original floor mats a little cargo mat and i'm assuming under here well it's a little dirty under here i'm afraid to look now yeah we have a spare a few little chips here and there it's a local car in socket rhode island pop the hood i do like the big grill they kind of refresh the front end of these cars and the rear bumpers a little bit so like the 06 7 8 i don't know when i'm not too familiar but this is a little bit different of a grill and front bumper setup than like the earlier 06 07 08 ish they're a little bit more rounded uh 3.9 liter v6 i mean nothing crazy under here you have some paint chipping on the edges of the panels. You can see the little rust spots on these bolts. So obviously they've been off. Obviously that fender has either been replaced or repaired at one point. Um, but this is one of the, this is the upper torque mount. There's another mount down there. The most common one is that guy down there, it's a little donut mount. Um, when you drove it and it shifted, you could feel it jumping. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we did all four, and then over here, there's a transmission mount. Uh, it's got some debris up in the debris grill. And I cleaned it up quickly. I didn't do a crazy, crazy detail on this car. But uh, the other thing, um, I did clean the engine, but like I said earlier, I think the valve cover gaskets are just starting to seep out a little bit because um, you can kind of see that little fade spot on the hood um, because the, the like the bottom of the engine is damp with oil. Um, but anyways, let's let me put my plate on it. We'll take it for a spin. All right, behind the wheel of the Buick, um, like I said, it does have uh, cold air, air works, heat works. Um, radio works. I don't know what the heck that so was. Not only does my <laughs> Has all the steering wheel controls for your radio. Um, source, seek, heated steering wheel. I, honestly, I didn't try that, so I don't know if it works, but we'll find out. Cruise, your heated seats, windows, locks, headlights. These control your readouts here. I think that's how many miles I put on. It was 265. Um, it's got 144,465 miles, parking assist, tire pressures, you can change all this stuff, go through there. Anyways, we'll go back to car. Where do we go back to car? There we go. 58 degrees outside. It's beautiful. out. We got shorts on. We're doing pitches outside again. Um, I absolutely love it. All right, let's take it for a spin. 
I actually can feel the steering wheel, I believe, starting to warm up already. crazy in the camera. I don't know why this car is doing it so crazy like that, but oh, I got a green light. Uh, but in real life, that's not flashing. I haven't had to say that in a while. <laughs> Alright, let's take it up on the highway. Um, so I mentioned earlier in the video how I did do some service work. We did full wheel brakes, did the brake hoses in the front, rear air shocks, for motor mounts, um, just a new Delco battery, two tail lights, the outer tail lights, but it still needs love. Um, you can see it needs a little bit of an alignment, steering wheel's off just a little bit. Um, I think I can hear a little bit of a wheel bearing hum in the front, just starting, um, which isn't uncommon for these front wheel drive cars. Might be a little bit of tire noise, I guess, but I, I believe, I'm thinking it might be a little bit of a hum just starting from the wheel bearing. The last time it passed Mass State Inspection, it passed through with flying colors, which is pretty, pretty strict, but it rolls down the road nicely. Um, so I know it needs an alignment. I know it's gonna need at least two tires. Um, I know it leaks a little bit of oil. Uh, what else? Brakes are good, battery's good. That wiper um, squirter is kind of a little broken. That guy potentially is broken, but hopefully that glue holds. We'll get that re. Uh, oh yeah, this heated steering wheel is working. Um, it just it rolls down the road good. It's, it's, it's a cheap car that I don't know, with a little bit more love or just drive it the way it is. You know, I don't know if your state has inspections. Every state's different. Um, with the tire, at least that left rear tire, probably wouldn't pass New Hampshire state inspection. So, um, I don't know, I'm just being transparent and honest. And that's why it's hard for me to do these cars because like, I don't like making up, not making up excuses, but you know, oh, it needs this, it needs that, you know, it might need this or whatever. Like, I don't like doing that. That's not me. So it's hard for me to do this. I have a buddy who specializes in selling cheaper cars and it comes natural to him and it doesn't come natural to me. Um, and that's why when I got this car in, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do tires, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And he was actually the one who took, brought me in check. He's like, Anthony, it's a 145,000 almost mile car. You can't make it brand new and you can't because then I'd be losing money. What the heck? I just did. Oh, maybe it needs a bulb too. I checked the bulbs before I did the tail light. Um, but yeah, so that's the Buick. Any questions, you can give me a call, 978-930-1004. Um, running, driving, beautiful 2011 Buick Lucerne CXL. Uh, and this is the part that everybody wants to know. How much is the car, Anthony? Uh, so the price on this car is going to be $29.95. That's $2,995. And if you say to yourself, holy shit, how does he even make any money? Well, I'm really not making much of anything. After, you know, allotting for the trade and then subletting that labor out to do the brakes and all the service work, it's this is just a... A time filler, which that's the last thing I need right now. So twenty nine ninety five for the car. Uh, car is being sold as is. Like I said, you know, um, I disclosed everything I knew of this car. I have driven it a few hundred miles, and I had it serviced. You know, getting the stuff that it absolutely needed. The brakes pulsated a little bit. The hoses obviously needed to be replaced. The battery needed to be replaced. Um, tail lights, all those are cheap enough. I was at the junkyard anyways. Um, rear shocks needed to be replaced. The rest of it is kind of like cheap car territory, do as you will. So anyways, any questions, give me a call. 978-930-1004. Uh, I don't think this one will stick around too, too long. But uh, give me a call if you have any questions. 
appreciate everybody for watching. Thanks, and we'll talk to you on the next one.